All right, so what's going on? Vinland Saga, episode five, The Troll's Son. Let's get right into it, guys. So I gotta say, this is an excellent episode right off the bat. We pick up where we left off. Askeladd and his band of mercenaries are on a ship, and they arrive on a little piece of land with a village. They decide they need a little bit of a break, quote-unquote break. They're going to actually terrorize the village and kill all the people, and then they're going to steal all the resources. And all the goods for themselves. So I guess that's what constitutes as a break for a Viking. Those freaking badasses. But anyway, Sorfin, uh, he's in the woods by himself. He escapes from the Vikings. So he's uh, trying to kind of survive on his own for a little bit. And while he's doing that, he decides to seize an opportunity for himself. He's still got his little sword that, his little dagger that his dad gave him, Thor's, and Thorfinn decides, hey, maybe I can sneak in and kill Askeladd. He gets to the place where Askeladd is sleeping, probably a house that he stole from one of the villagers, and he sees a, an even bigger sword on the ground. So he decides to seize the sword and sneak into Askeladd's house. And then right as he's about to kill Askeladd, he's got the sword ready. He's about to swing. Askeladd's sleeping or supposedly sleeping. He's got the rage in his heart and in his face. Got all sorts of vengeful intentions, but he just can't do it. He's thinking about his dad and how honorable he was and how a real man would never just kill and cold blood so he decides you know what i'm not gonna do this right here right now this is not right i'm gonna challenge him to a duel face to face when things are equal even though he's a kid and Askeladd is a full-grown adult he still feels like a duel is the only way to go and then just as he leaves the area we see that Askeladd was not sleeping whatsoever he had his eyes fully awakened and i i wonder if Askeladd was resigned to allow Thorfinn to kill him. I wonder if he felt like deep in his heart, you know what, what I did to Thor's was not right, and now that I left this kid all on his own in the world with no one to help him or support him or give him guidance, maybe this is what I deserve, maybe Thorfinn should just kill me, you know, that'll be that. But uh, of course, we don't see what happens. Perhaps maybe a Thorfinn would have swung his blade, Askeladd would have stopped it, or maybe not. So, but you know, throughout the episode, we do get a little interesting insight into Askeladd. You know, at first we kind of think of him as this pirate mercenary who doesn't seem very honorable, who seems like he employs dirty tactics, and he just doesn't seem like a very nice guy uh, in any regard. Doesn't seem to have any sort of ethical code, you know, whatever it takes to win, that's what he's going to do, which is very realistic and what a warrior would do back in those times, so I appreciate that. But then you kind of get some more interesting insights on him, and especially throughout this episode, you know, we see two duels between him and Thorfinn, and in the first duel, Thorfinn attacked, he gets his blade stuck in a piece of wood, Askeladd kicks him, he doesn't show him any sort of mercy, except in the sense that he doesn't kill him. I mean, he very easily could just say, this child is enraged, vengeful, he doesn't have any respect. I could just kill him easily. No one's gonna do anything to me. It's not like there's anyone that could challenge me that supports him. The people from his village ran away in fear. The cost-benefit analysis is in my favor. I mean, I could kill him and no one's gonna do a damn thing. There's no one in the world that is going to come after me in vengeance. And he's just a child. But it seems like Askeladd, maybe he respected Thor's so much. And I feel like he sees a lot of Thor's in Thorfinn. Even though Thorfinn has not yet matured, he understands, you know, there's a lot of potential in this young boy. And whether or not, you know, Askeladd can use him in the future for his own benefit, that's a matter for debate. But I think he recognizes that, hey, there's a lot of potential in this child. And it would be a waste if we didn't see what 
he could become. It, you know, maybe he could become as strong as his father, maybe even stronger, maybe even wiser, due to the fact that he saw how his father died and he wouldn't be as willing to die as a hero because he saw that it really didn't accomplish anything for his father. So he would have that knowledge of gotta be ruthless in this world, but still have the strength of his father within him, especially after he cultivates his talents for years to come. And that's sort of how the second duel ends too. You know, you see that Thorfinn has honed in on his abilities a little bit. He's catching some animals in the forest. And uh, Askeladd recognizes that, hey, even in a short amount of time, he's exponentially increased his strength and his uh, sword skills. So if I just give this guy a few years, allow him to fight in battles and wars, this guy could really turn into a true warrior. And that's when I want to fight him again. Because I feel like maybe he feels like the way that the battle ended between him and Thor's was not right. Um, yeah, he killed him, he won the war, but he knows in his heart that he couldn't beat Thor's on a one-on-one -on -one battle, so maybe he feels like if he allows Thor's son, Thorfinn, to become a true warrior and he beats him in battle, he can sort of claim, you know what, now I did win that duel with the true troll of Yom. So maybe that's what he's thinking in his heart, because uh, it, it definitely seems like he's showing him a bit of mercy that the other Vikings are just not willing to uh, bestow upon him. The other Vikings just want to, you know, if it was up to them, they'd probably just kill the boy and just leave it at that. And then we wouldn't have an anime to watch. Uh, that's about it on Thorfinn's sort of character arc in this story. We also see a little bit of uh, Thorfinn's sister, his older sister, Yova. How she's taking the responsibilities in the village and helping the villagers fish and taking care of the responsibilities at home. She's essentially becoming the man of the house since she's got to take care of her mother and take care of all those responsibilities. So that was a nice little scene as well. And I gotta say the animation and the artwork for this episode was just phenomenal. I'm usually not one to revel in the artistic beauty unless it's something that is just transcendent. Something that just goes above and beyond the norm. And and I feel like Vinland Saga has done that in this episode. A lot of the artwork is just gorgeous. And a lot of the scenes in the forest too with the blood running down Thorfinn's hands really give you that visceral feeling, that authentic, genuine feeling that, man, this is a brutal world that he's living in and damn if you don't feel sorry for him. So yeah, just a phenomenal episode from start to finish. Vinland Saga in general, it started off good and I feel like each episode is really building upon that. I was kind of worried maybe in episode 4 that it was getting a little bit unrealistic, but episode 5, especially when Askeladd and his crew terrorize that village, I was like, geez, this feels like it's out of a history book, but it's stylized in the way of an anime and, it, and it's exciting. So, I mean, it, it's just a beautiful anime and I, I just can't wait to see the next episode. They don't make anime like these nowadays. This is a welcome surprise. So, yeah, I, I hope it just keeps on going. I hope we get better and better and I hope this ch turns into one of those anime that is just something that's truly great, maybe even a masterpiece. So, till next time, eagerly awaiting the next episode. I hope you guys are. But uh, until then, catch you on the flip side.